running around. So we'll start with some meditation. So I personally actually like to do it on the bolster, but what I do is I pop a block to sit on. But you can sit on the floor or hero pose because we're well, going to be doing the metronome meditation. So ideally, you want to be able to um, sway from side to side. Um, and the whole idea of having something hard under your bum or a matron is that you can feel your ischium bones, your sitting bones. So like I said, so it's up to you how you want to have the legs, as long as you're comfortable. Oh, good. So just take a moment to just start connecting with your body. Just bringing a little bit of calmness to you. Maybe you've just come back from work. So we'll just start with creating space in your spine. So if you imagine each of your vertebrae, imagine you're going to put a little pocket of air between each vertebra. space across your collarbones. So if you want to just think of where your sternum is or where the two collarbones come to the center of your chest, think of widening that space. So almost, not exaggerating, but imagine you're trying to squeeze the shoulder blades together and pull them down your back without your back coming into an extension. The chin is dropped ever so slightly just to give you some length neck and the back. So often when we drop the chin slightly, the head drops forward, but you want to keep, imagine there's a wall behind, you want to keep the head against the wall. Relaxing into your legs and your hips, and just let your pelvis become heavy into the hardness of your block on the floor. Just settle into that position. A few breaths here before we start the actual meditation. So allow your breath to lengthen. side then the other side heavy on one side then the other side and we're going to be doing this for five minutes and I will tell you when we get halfway but as we work through the five minutes the movement is going to become slower and slower so the last minute you're going to be pretty much still but just a slight movement so if you need to have a fidget, have a fidget. I'll just need to run up and grab my phone. Sorry, guys. We are a bit organised because the internet crashed. Yeah. <laughs> 
So you can just start to introduce that movement. So I'm not going to dictate breath. Sometimes it might take one long inhale to do two movements and exhale. But just let your body do what it naturally wants you to do. whether the breath is dictating your movement or is your movement dictating the breath.
you can blink your eyes open and just let your breath go and come back to normal. So we're going to start on our back and whether you have one of these blocks or a Pilates block, let's say Pilates one, the smaller ones, we're going to come into kind of a Shavasana for the first one and we are just going to open up the hips to start with. So we'll be on our back and depending on how intensely you want to work, you can either have the small block or you can have a bigger block. But obviously if you've been sat at a desk all day or you've been driving all day, then just maybe stick with the small one because they're going to be quite tight anyway. You can either have your arms out to the side or if you want to work more into fascia, especially down the back, your arms can either be reaching to the wall behind you or you can even cross your arms together. So I do find if I do that, I need to just put a block under my arms just because of the shoulders. And have a play with where the block is. Sometimes I find I actually need to move the block a little bit closer towards my coccyx or maybe a little bit more towards the back. So just feel block. So you've all experienced at yin yoga, so I'm not going to dictate what you need to do in this moment. But your main intention is to stay focused on the present. So staying focused on what you're doing in this very moment. So whether you use your breath to focus. I like to count my breath. I find that's one of the things that helps me the most, staying in the moment. Affirmations is another thing that you can use. you feel like it's released a little bit and perhaps you can bring your arms a bit closer together above your head maybe you can reach them further away just trying to increase the sensation in some way keep that exhale longer than the inhale which helps to stimulate your parasympathetic nervous system calms your body brings your heart rate down especially in yin, can be even more challenging than going into the poses. So be very gentle with your movements as you come out. 
So we've released the front part of the body, we're going to do the side. So we're going to take this into banana. So if you've never done the banana before, you can watch. So start, oops, starting on my back and my arms are length. And pretty much like you've done now, but I haven't got the block underneath my hips. I'm going to walk my feet over towards the right corner. And then I'm going to walk my head and top half of my spine over towards the right side as well. So what I do like to do is I like to take the right hand and hold the left hand, but see how that feels on the shoulder. The shoulder might not like it, so you might need to just put a block under there. You can cross the left leg over the top. You can put a bolster or a block next to there so that it doesn't fall. And then we'll settle into that position. So especially for men, that can be quite challenging on that outer thigh, just because of the shape of the pelvis and the structure of the hip. And then we will settle. So we'll do three minutes on the side again. So don't forget, as we work into this and you pass a minute or so, just check your body. Maybe you can go a little bit deeper because the fascia will release. It might be that you can take the arms a bit more towards your right or your legs. And then what I want you to focus on is breathing into the left side of your body. So expand your left rib cage. Almost imagine that you are sending the air down your left thigh to your left ankle. You want space. Come back to that breathing. space can you go deeper so walking the feet a bit further over or the hands and maybe the answer is no that's okay
and shimmy your hands and your hips to the left corner of the mat as well. And your right leg can stay next to it, maybe put a block or a bolster to stop it coming back over, or you can cross the legs over.
um, maybe a minute and a half or two minutes, just with no blocks. So again, you can have hands under your legs there, you can have your head on a block, whatever is comfortable for you to sit in. between a minute, minute and a half. So when you come into your forward fold, there wants to be a little bit of stress on the body. So I cheat a little bit with this and I'll stay quite high out of it because <laughs> I get in my hamstrings. But you do want to feel something. You just don't want it to be a muscular pull into that. Just find the edge of, oh yeah, I can feel that. And then that's where you settle. So maybe your discomfort is a five. You kind of want to be around that area. And after a while, the five then becomes a four. So then at that point, you can move a little bit deeper into it to come back to that discomfort level of five again. Let your shoulders drop down, breathe into your belly release as much tension from the body as you can. Let gravity take hold of the head. under your feet. So 
and unless you suffer with sciatica, stay on the block. Otherwise, we're going to have the block under the feet. For those that tend to be a little bit more flexible, Sally, Ali, especially apart from me, Judith and Pete, you might even want to use a bigger block so that you can get more sensation. So Judith has got pretty good hamstrings as well. Just me and you, Pete. <laughs> so again, you can have cushions under there. We're just coming back into that position. And notice now how does it feel? Maybe you can feel it more in the calves.
luck, so like Judas, you might find the smaller ones better. Um, you might even, if you have a big one like that, want the smaller one under the head. So it's going to go between your shoulder blades. Now for those of you that want to work more extreme, you're going to have the block touching the spine long way, so it's quite high, so it's going to be like that. Otherwise, just going to have the block between the shoulder blades. And then like, I'll have another block under my head then maybe. I can find it. And then arms out. So it's almost like the reclined butterfly, but the head is more back onto the floor. And then what I want you to do, instead of letting your chin go to the wall behind you, you can either just tuck the chin in, but what I actually like to do is lift my head and where my index fingers are in the occipital lobe and I lift my head and I try and move the fingers to the wall behind me to help do a chin tuck and then I put my head down and then take the arms so it's actually not very comfortable but if you like me and I'm on the computer a lot or you ladies that are sewing quite a lot we tend to be in this position where the back of the shoulders are right up to the back of the head so we want to create length in that part. So although it's not very comfortable, after a while you will think, oh yeah, I can actually feel it's releasing those muscles. So Ali, for you that likes the anatomy, the vatus scapula is really releasing that area there, down into the shoulder blades. Now with your legs, I'll leave the choice to you. You can have your legs bent, knees together, wide, you can take a butterfly pose, you can have legs straight, whatever you want to do with the legs, because I'm not really focusing on the lower part of this one, this I'm opening up the chest and the front of the throat, especially after we've just done um, those forward flexions. You might find after a while that you can move the head a little bit more.
your hands to lift your head up so that your eyes are looking towards your knees. And you can start to bring yourself into a seated position. So for the next one, we're gonna do deer pose. So you want to have um, a block or cushion and you, if you've got a bolster or something in there. So, um, yeah. so have them both on your right hand side. Um, and see how you are, but you might need to turn to the side just because of your space. So in that position, I'm sitting now in hero pose. So I'm actually going to take my hips and put them onto the right side. And I'm going to put a block next to that hip. Your bottom leg, the knee stays in line with that hip, but you're going to put the shin parallel to the front of the mat. So that's 90 degree and the leg is parallel there. Your back leg, you're going to put in line with the back of the mat or the back knee will be in line with the back hip and then your rear ankle is in line with the knee. So if you were looking from above, you would be looking at a swastika. So it used to be called swastikana. So it's a left-handed one. So that's the shape that we're making. So through this, you're trying to maintain that shape. And I know when I do this, my back foot kicks in a little bit. So be mindful of that. Sometimes I'll just put a block there so I can feel that. So the reason I'm putting this is I'm going to take a little bit of time explaining this because sometimes people just lie in the hip. So you can see the trousers, where my trousers are there. What I'm trying not to do is just roll onto the side of the pelvis. I'm trying to keep the pelvis exactly where it is and then from there lie down. So you can see I haven't come on to the side of the hips. So that's why I put a block there just gives me that feedback as oh I'm lying on the block or can I keep my hip off of the block as I rotate round so now when you're rotating round everything in your lower part of your pelvis stays exactly where it is the nice thing about the deer pose is it releases really quickly you're going to feel your body settle quite quickly into this so your intention is to try and be in line with your mat. So at the moment, my chest is to the left corner of my mat. But after a while, I'm gonna try and rotate a little bit more and more and more. And then it might be, you can see I've already released a little bit. You might be able to come down onto the bolster and work your way deeper and deeper and deeper into this. But you can still see I haven't lined that laid, lying down on the block. Um, like I said, often what people do is they move the whole pelvis and they're rolling on the side of their hip and then everything is coming off the floor. So basically the movement comes wherever your elastic band is in your trousers, the movement comes from above. Okay, so we're going to do that one first. And I'm actually going to leave you in this one for a long period, for five minutes. Because your body releases so well with the deer pose, gives you a good chance and a good bit of time just to release into your back. So, and then what I tend to do when I'm in the deer pose is, because I'm going to my right side, the right elbow is probably going to be heavier than your left elbow. But you can always use that to create a little bit of resistance to help turn your body so it's facing towards and then after a while you might be able to move a little bit more. So remember we're on the pelvis, not on the side of the pelvis, so just be mindful of that the whole time to press start. Also just check if you're sagging in the shoulders, you want to push the floor away from you or push your chest away from the floor. into your belly and your side body with this. Like I said, you are going to feel how quickly you can um, 
moving that, I'm just going to see if I can see it all now.
right. So I can't feel the right one. The right one's up there. I'm putting the block over there because I don't want to roll onto the hip. I'm going to keep the hip stacked. Bottom foot is in line with the mat there. Back foot is in line. So it doesn't matter if your mat's in a different position. You just want that leg parallel to the front and your thigh bone um, in line with the hip. Okay, so it's 90 degrees. Same with the back one. Back knee is in line with the back hip. The ankle is in line with the knee. So they're wide ankles. Turn. So I can just feel if you've got tightness in your body, your back foot's going to want to kick out and just straighten up. So be conscious of that. So what I'm actually going to do is just give myself a little bit of something to give me feedback because I know my feet move. So I'm just going to put a block there to tell me my feet are moving. So I'm going to turn to face the top end of the mat. And it might be that you've just got to hold that position or you can come down to the elbows. But again, if you have the block, then just feel whether you're actually trying to lie on the block or not. Because if you're lying, you're not really stretching in the back, just the pelvis is rolled over. Or you can use the bolster. And then whatever side you're on, if you're on your elbows, focus on the left elbow, your weight is going to be mostly there. And see if you can actually push down and help turn the body without your rear leg moving. So like I said, the top leg is probably going to be the one that will move the most. And then we will stay in that four. is one that will give quite quickly. And depending on where you can feel that in your body, see if you can breathe into that area. So back of the hips. I've got a little visitor that wants to have a urination.
is a choice of how high you want to work in your space. So you can either be quite low in that position there, you can have your bolster there if you want to. You can have the bolster cushions right up under the rib cage towards the bed button so that you're higher. Have a block under your head there. So entirely up to you as to how big a curve you want to make in that lower back. Um, <coughs> if you've been quite active, then maybe a high extension is fine. But if you've been sat on a computer all day long or at a desk, then maybe a lower one will be sufficient enough, providing you can feel it. As always, that's all we're after. So we're only going to do a couple of minutes in this one. Relaxing your bum cheeks. So I'm going to go quite high, but if you like me and you've got weight in your elbows, just be mindful that your shoulders and your ears don't come closer together. Still, when we have that space around the neck area, relax your booties, relax your bum cheeks. Shoulders are back and down. Want to pop that block, which now it's <laughs> too far, you'll have the head on the floor. So I'm just going to do that the other way around. So roll, you bend your legs, and you can pop your block on, uh, head on a block. And relax. So we're actually just again um, working into the shoulder joint, so stretching off that muscle. So the palm will be facing down the thumb. Will. So we've got the right hand out, you're going to roll onto your right side and pull the knees up. So the more you can stack your pelvis, the more stretch you're going to get into that. So a little bit of health and safety with that one. If you get any pins and needles in your arm, just roll a bit forward so you come out of that slightly because you're probably just impinging the brachial nerve. Too long on this one. 
those that want to work a little bit more intensely, you can take your top arm and put it behind your back so that you're trying to roll your top shoulder more to the wall behind you. So there's going to be a little bit more opening of the chest. Good. top hand to help push your body so don't push in the bottom arm push the top hand roll onto your left side bring your knees up to your chest or somewhere around there and then you can either take the top hand over the back or just relax it on the floor in front of you head on a cushion if you want to it really depends on your neck Again, the more deeper you want to work into that arm, the more you want to stack your hips and stack the shoulders. So you want to send your shoulders backward if you can. Um, again, it depends on your shoulder joint. Again, any pins and needles down your left arm, just come out of that slightly. Give the knees a cuddle. 
And then we're gonna take the knees over onto the blocks. Shoulder blades are on the floor and the arms are in a T position. Now, if you wanna work a bit more into the fascia, and we're gonna just send my legs the other way. The opposite arm, if you send it in to the opposite direction, so a bit more like a YMCA shape, you might get a little bit more pulling around under the armpit, which is really good for stretching off those pec muscles, uh, the fascia and everything. So if you want to increase that stretch, that's where you can put that arm. So I'm just on my left side there. So think of sending the right arm in the opposite direction to the leg. You can take a block away if you want to make it deeper. You can cross the top leg. Lots of things you can do with that. Providing both the shoulders are on the floor and the back of your right arm is on the floor. So if that's lifting off, then you're going too far. Just break it in a little bit. to make your way into a seated position. So whether you want to be in a hero pose again or cross legs or on a block, Thank you. 
about space and just hold it there for a moment. You can drop the chin out so slightly or just not. Stay ladies and peace.